everyone, welcome to highlights of the 2011 Formula Sim Racing World Championship. I'm Simon Adebisi and after a long five month off season, our factor's top F1 league is once again back in action. This season kicking off with the Bahrain Grand Prix. 57 laps of the Herman Tilke design circuit, this year reverting back to the original layout. The track features long straights, very tight corners and is notoriously harsh on the car's brakes. The new qualifying format for 2011 sees a 10 minute long session for all drivers with the top 10 then advancing through to a second session where they are only allowed to drive one single flying lap bound by Park Fermo rules. And it was Frederick Nilsson for Twister Racing who found himself in the top spot, taking the first pole of his career. He was followed by reigning world champion Bono Huis and Jaco Makonen for Precision Motorsports. David Greco qualified in fourth ahead of Arte Kirchhoff and Morgan Moran set an impressive time putting the brand new ATR Silverline team into sixth on the grid. The Matt Court Racing team made up the fourth row of the grid just ahead of John Eric Saxon driving for the Aero F1 team who have returned to FSR after a two year absence. The newly badged Estrada DHR team now known as GT Amiga Racing qualified in 10th and 11th. Veteran teams faster than speed and go speed struggled in qualifying, finishing well down the order. Disaster struck Twister even before the race start with pole sitter Frederick Nilsson suffering an electrical problem on the formation lap and being forced to retire. To the race start and Jarko McConan had a much better launch than his teammate Huys, but Huys stayed on the inside and maintained first position into the first turn. All of the drivers made it cleanly through turn one, except for Morgan Morand who spun on the exit and Rasmus Tali who ran a little wide out of turn two. Kirchhoff then outbroke himself into the tricky turn nine, making it back onto the track into eighth place. Having started in 11th position, Rudy Van Buren was now incredibly up into fourth position in his first ever FSR race. After an eventful opening lap, Weiss was in the lead ahead of McConan, Greco and Van Buren. Just behind were Tali, Boomalainen and Lucas Euler, who had also made an impressive start to get up into 7th place from 14th on the grid. Back in 10th position, Saxon tried to retake a position from De Witt, but the two made contact with Saxon losing several positions. However, De Witt could not hold off Lee Morris, who passed him for 9th place a couple of laps later. After his off-track excursion, Kirchhoff then caught and passed Euler for 7th place and began to catch up with the Matt Court duo of Tali and Boomalainen, who were being held up by Van Buren in fourth. As we slowly extended his lead, second place McConan was being hounded by Greco, who, despite being faster, could not find a way through McConan's dirty air. Further behind, ATR driver Morand was charging through the field after his first lap spin, now up into 11th place, just ahead of his teammate Alar Fote. Too fast for you driver Blair Disley seemed to be struggling on the secure circuit down in 13th position, a long way off the pace of his third place teammate Greco. In 4th position, GT Amiga driver Van Buren was unable to hold off the two Mac 4 cars behind him, with Tali and Pumalainen both finding their way through. Gurkhoff would then follow through in the next sector, dropping Van Buren into 7th position. On lap 8, De Witt made an uncharacteristic mistake, slipping off the circuit and losing several positions. Meanwhile, Moran continued to move up, making a somewhat awkward pass on Lucas Euler and then on Lee Morris a few laps later. At the front, Bono Huis was slowly but surely edging out a gap on teammate McConan, who was unable to shake off third place Greco. Just behind, Rasmus Tali managed to create a slight gap between himself and Pumalainen, who was less than two seconds ahead of Kirchhoff in sixth. As the race went on, Blair Disley seemed to gradually gain some pace, passing Alar Fote and then pulling off an impressive outside pass on Euler. Sadly, Euler lost traction and span off into the gravel pit, dropping him way down into second last place. Moran's run through the field halted when he had another spin, this time into turn nine, losing positions back to Morris and Disley. The midpoint of the race saw the majority of drivers making their one and only stops. David Greco was right behind McConan when he made his pit stop and both precision drivers pitted on the next lap. McConan exited the pits to find Greco right where he'd left him, less than a second behind. But having had an extra lap to warm his tyres, Greco had the edge over McConan and with a better run onto the main straight, Greco made the pass stick to move up into second place. There was more good news for the Too Fast For You team as Lee Morris was leapfrogged by Disley for eight through the stops and exiting the pit lane, Morris only just managed to beat Moran into the first corner. 
Despite now having a free track, Greco could still not close the gap down to the race leader Bono Huis, with the reigning world champion driving with rock solid consistency. Just behind in fourth place, Rasmus Tali was maintaining a solid gap back to Bumalainen and Kirchhoff in sixth. Disley soon caught and passed Van Buren with ease, however the GT Amiga car managed to stay tucked behind in Disley's slipstream for several laps. Unfortunately, after an amazing start, Van Buren's debut suffered a nasty blow when the Dutchman span on the exit of the final turn, dropping him down into 10th position and into the clutches of John Eric Saxon. Go-speed driver Jim Parissus, who was also on his debut, had had a lonely race after having to start from the pit lane, but he gave the spectators some entertainment during a brief fight for 12th place with the two stopping Patrick De Witt. However, with just six laps to go, De Witt's engine packed it in, ending a frustrating season opener for the faster-than-speed racing team. In the closing stages of the race, a rare mistake from Disley saw the Australian driver lose traction out of Turn 4, allowing Lee Morris to close in right behind him, and on the penultimate lap, Morris made Disley pay for his mistake, taking 7th position through Turn 1. After yet another dominating performance, Bono Huiz demonstrated that he has had no problem adapting to the new physics, leading the Grand Prix from start to finish and achieving his 14th podium in a row. Dabba Greco made a great season start, finishing in a solid second place, and Jarko Makonen rounded off the podium in third. The Mack Court racing duo of Tali and Pumalainen finished in fourth and fifth, with Kirchhoff finishing just behind in sixth position. GT Amiga Racing had a mixed race, Morris putting in a good performance to take seventh, and Van Buren demonstrating that he has got the pace to fight for positions well inside the top ten, despite a bad end to his race. The new teams ATR and Aero both managed to finish with drivers inside the top ten to get themselves some much valued points. Veteran teams Go Speed and Faster Than Speed both have a lot of work to do to improve on their performance for the next race. As this is the first round, the driver standings are a direct reflection of today's race, with all drivers in the top 10 scoring points. The constructors' table sees Precision take an early lead, with the Too Fast For You and Matt Court teams tied for second place. A little further behind, Twister Racing are in fourth, and GT Amiga Racing, ATR and Aero all scored points. The next round will be the Australian Grand Prix, and you can watch that race live as it happens Simply go to www.psrtv.com on the 10th of April at 5.30pm GMT. We hope you've enjoyed today's highlights. I'm Simon Adebisi and we'll see you next week for round two of the 2011 Formula Sim Racing World Championship.